So uh, I'll uh, thank AOS and uh, Ramesh sir for this wonderful opportunity to be a part of this uh, lovely instruction course. So I'm going to talk on uh, pre-planning, patient selection, role of ocular surface, and what's new in keratometry. Well, about 30% of our patients presenting for cataract surgery have astigmatism that could be corrected by way of astigmatism correcting lenses. With regards to patient selection criteria, any patient with astigmatism of more than one diopter with symmetrical astigmatism and axis 90 degrees apart can be taken up for considering a toric implant. So contraindications include patients where we have irregular corneal astigmatism or patients with whom the astigmatism keeps changing and it is not stable. Unreliable measurement with regards to dry eye and KC are conditions where it is a relative contraindication, but still we can consider having toric lenses with caution. Well, the new kid on the block, ocular surface, which everybody is talking in every webinar, it has a very major role to play in our ocular surface uh, in uh, astigmatism management also. Well, this landmark trial published in JCRS says about 80% of patients presenting for cataract surgery do have significant ocular surface disorder. So what happens is if you use a placido-based uh, astigmatism measuring device, the astigmatism can be uh, wrong and we can get absolutely haywire values before and after using lubricants or, or treating the ocular surface disorders. Well, the ACRS algorithm published in 2019 gives us an easy way to get out of this confusion which can be created. Explaining this in detail is beyond the scope of this uh, uh, limited time. So I'd like to go to the final part. Well, uh, it has a questionnaire followed by a series of examination and evaluation where you can diagnose the OST as visually significant and visually non-significant dry eye disorders. If the patient comes under visually significant dry eye disorders, you have to be cautious and delay the workup by about a couple of weeks and then take up the case. Well, thank, picture courtesy, Ramesh sir. Well, this was a patient with significant uh, dry eye disease and you can see a drop of 1% CMC before and after taking the images. Well, the clarity of the Myers are totally different before and after. So what is significant of the learning points from this ASCRS study is taking a decade history, slit lamp examination, look at the ocular surface, lift and pull the lid, look for lid laxity, push and examine the mabobin gland secretions. T-butt is a very important test which gives us a lot of clues with regards to how and when to do the ocular surface, uh, when and how to do the uh, astigmatism evaluation. Well, the newer devices like Mabography, if we have access, are added advantages. But with this, we'll be able to more or less be able to decide whether we can do the uh, astigmatism evaluation or do we need to delay it. Well, the ever so reliable manual K even now has a role in astigmatism evaluation. So what is important is the keratometer needs to be evaluated at least once a year and keratometry should be done only on virgin eyes. Even things like a non-contact tonometry or applying uh, anesthetic drops totally spoils the tear film, giving rise to wrong keratometric values. So the take-home message with regards to manual keratometry is do it on a virgin eye. Here you can see application tonometry being done and then we are trying to do an auto K where the Myers seem to be absolutely distorted. The red flag signs in manual keratometry are look for shape of Myers. If the Myers are irregular, wavy, distorted, or you're not able to align the Myers, these are indications that keratometry is difficult. The limitation of manual K is only central K can be obtained and the peripheral cornea is ignored where our topography comes into play. If we have access to a topographer, we'll be able to analyze the total cornea properly and then do uh, the keratometry. The problem with keratometers is different keratometers take readings at different areas of the cornea. So the message here is if you do a manual K, do not take the manual K values and enter it into your lens star or your IOL master and then do because the IOL master is designed for K at 2.5 and lens star at 1.7. If the astigmatism is varying between the central and paracentral zones and you do this, we will end up with wrong values. Well, in 2015, when we started this IC, we said that manual K was good enough to do toric implants and we can do 
uh, a key by doing topography and uh, topography gives reasonably good access evaluation. Just like how physical uh, conferences have become a history, manual key and this technique also is all history now. It all changed with this landmark trial by Dr. Douglas Koch, where he found out the significance of posterior corneal astigmatism and the Baylor nomogram came into play. So we also evolved and when we did the uh, uh, IC in 2017, we included the topic of PCA into our talk and said PCA was a way forward for toric implants. Unfortunately, that also is history now. Ever since Dr. Barrett came out with his calculator, which RD sir will be explaining in detail, K values have totally undergone a sea of change. And now what's new in K is the K calculator, which comes with the Barrett's uh, uh, formula, which is free of cost. The K calculator helps us to give the integrated K. That is, we can take K from three different devices, say our manual K, IOL master, or our uh, auto K. It calculates the posterior corneal astigmatism and gives us a presumed keratometry, which can be used into the calculator, and it is reasonably good. It gives us the median from these three devices. Anything more in K? Of course, yes. In 2019, in ASCRS, we had the pleasure of listening to Dr. Barrett, where he delivered his talk, where he says, Exactly measuring the key using the sweat source based biometers is even more significant and gives absolutely very good values. The reason being there is no extrapolation done and, ac and actual measurements of the posterior cornea is done with the sweat source based biometers. But what was surprising is these values or these readings are very good with regards to uh, patients who have undergone keratorefractive surgery in future. So. 70% of patients have an error of less than 0.5, which is mind boggling for a patient who's undergone keratorefractive surgery. But however, what is surprising is patients with normal eyes or virgin eyes, even now the Barrett's predicted posterior corneal astigmatism measurement is perfectly fine and good enough. Well, this may change with time. With regards to keratoconus, the only thing I would like to say is up to 55 diopters, the uh, surprise that we get is not much. Maybe a mild hyperopic shift can happen. So use a proper protocol, standardize everything. And then the bottom line is manual K even now has a role. It can be used to quantify astigmatism. However, with caution, topo can be done to do access evaluation to detect subtle irregularities in the peripheral cornea. Standard K with PCA even now is good enough for virgin eyes in Barrett's. Total K with uh, the true K with Barrett's is excellent for post refractive surgery eyes. In 2022, what's new to expect in K? For that, you'll have to wait for our next IC. I'd like to thank Adi sir, Ramesh sir, and Partha sir for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you.